This is CBC. When I would get up on Saturday morning to watch cartoons with my brother, in between the cartoons there would be these little vignettes. And it was just this sequence of images of the landscape in Canada. This world that you're getting a glimpse onto. It shows nature to be this very strange thing that you sort of witness. It allows the images to speak for themselves. Oh yeah, so here's, this is the last segment that I've done. It's like a very slow motion psychedelic kind of thing. What do you think about the pace of it? I like how, I guess, how slow it is. Mm -hmm. But it's like this constant reveal. Are you being a yes man right now? No, <laughs> no I really, I, these are weird. The videos, I'll start with an image. This most recent one I found in an old 80s tourist brochure of British Columbia. Beautiful British Columbia, that's where I'm from. There's pictures of the landscape, um, quotes from the premier, images of flora and fauna and recreational activities you can <laughs> take part in. Highland dancing, it's something that uh, young girls in Canada are often subjected to learning, and I was one of them actually. So I was leafing through them, and I came across this image. This is the lake that I grew up on, Lake Okanagan. And it really just sort of arrested me when I saw the picture. This very sandy, dry landscape with these ponderosa pines. They're a very strange, creepy tree because they look dead, but they're not. I have a really strong sense of memory of sitting in the dust in this dead, enduring landscape that has this stillness about it. And that experience of stillness, I find to be really unsettling and compelling. All of the videos for me are psychologically driven. Road and Crater and the UN are both fairly blank forms. They both have this expressionless face that suggests an inaccessibility or an indifference, a fundamental apartness. It's like you're in this moment where you're regarding one another. You're coming to it, and it's coming to you, but only to a point. So I made different digital versions of the original Lake Okanagan image. Had them printed, took those hard copies back into the studio and re-photographed them on the wall. I put the camera on auto timer to take every 10 seconds or every five seconds, whatever. And then I just like dance around using, you know, various sort of analog lighting effects like clamp lights with gels or shadow play. For instance, these stills were taken by putting a clamp light right up to the back of this enlarged image. And so the light's shining right through. When I import all the stills and I start to choreograph it in Final Cut, I really tried to just let the video lead me where it goes. It seems like a train signal or something. I kind of like that. All right. 
<laughs> too cheesy? Yeah, when it's in the same place. You think it's dumb? It's too, but it's really Should I go like really like bang, like, bang, bang? No, that'd be. That'd be worse. The pleasure, I think, comes because you can create these really slow unfolding moments. The seductiveness of something very slowly happening on a screen can be very mesmerizing. You're playing with light on a surface. It's beautiful. All my work is very much about this open-ended encounter creating an occasion for an experience. This is the longest video I've made, actually. It's a 44-minute loop. But you don't have to sit and watch any of my videos. <laughs> I say that in jest, but I, I mean it. I made the very careful decision that the length of the loop is not advertised anywhere in the gallery. Because I feel like duration can be a comfort but it's also kind of a terror. My videos don't have any beginning or end. Every moment within it contains it, hopefully.